<laughs> it's spots are you hot spots are related to the ears right because mm -hmm. it's all because of the allergies so we don't get any actual yeast from it so there's no yeast so she's got her allergies we might want to do a protein clearing you know we might even do it after we're done with this situation today we might do it if you're you know, depending on how busy you are nope on, on your hands it would right be now. it would be like she'd have to not have proteins afterwards okay. you might repeat that because she had so many protein problems right and so because I'm not growing there's no yeast growing in here there's no mm -hmm. black when I look in the discharge there isn't any discharge in there smell or anything mm -hmm. so it's just pure on allergies yeah yeah so something's bugging her allergy but it's low grade and she doesn't have a secondary infection like she did before. right so that all makes sense and is good um, so yeah, let's just kind of move right into the hotspot stuff and what can we do at home? Like say you were in Montana, <laughs> where's another state where there'd be no holistic beds? <laughs> no, a Montana probably has them. Not where I was, I don't think. Really? Yeah, it's a small town. Yeah, big okay. sky is like small. But if you had, if she had broken out with a hotspot there, what would you do? I would wait to come back. I <laughs> would wait to go back. No, because <laughs> yes. hot spots get worse if you don't do anything. They kind of magnify. Oh. Yeah. They I, I would find somebody that I temporarily I, I could. Was, I was thinking that we could, I could show you some home things. Just okay. To kind of show me some home <laughs> things. Okay. I'm on to it now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm so to it. I'm going to go back to my laboratory now. Okay. I'm going to go back to where I make medicines and... We'll have Daphne will get a break. So um, here I have some typical things we use for hot spots. Um, and I just will kind of show people. Um, the, the, the easiest answer is to take um, lavender mm -hmm. <laughs> and dilute it with olive oil. So I have all kinds of different lavender sources. Um, and they're essential oils. Oh, how can you go wrong? You don't usually use essential oils on animals. Um, you use them uh, sparingly and you dilute them. And, but lavender is kind of the one exception that's very safe. Because um, a lot of people, their cats will get, their cats or dogs will get hot spots and they will um, put douse tea tree oil on them. <laughs> and I'm like, don't do that uh, because that's very toxic. And there's been a couple of cats that actually have died because they'll eat the, they'll, because these are, um, essential oils are really concentrated. And so the essential oils that are concentrated like that um, are not good for the animals to, to, to lick or chew or ingest. So, but the lavender is a little bit of an exception. If we dilute it 50-50 with oil, then um, so and this one's been diluted if if um, Daphne had a hot spot right now the lavender diluted with the olive oil would just take the pain and the burning right out of that so what do you think <laughs> um, lavender is an extremely effective medicine for burns probably the best medicine for burns and here I have a couple different types of lavender but they're all the basically the essential the essential oil of lavender this one this one and um, so if I just had one thing, I would just, ha in my emergency pack, I would pack some lavender and just be able to dilute it with some olive oil. Um, and that's good for both wet and dry hot spots. So Daphne, she had um, dry hot spots. Uh, but a lot of dogs, when we think about a hot spot, we think about a moist pyoderma type hot spot. And so lavender can be used on moist or dry hot spots. Um, and so can a lot of the things I'm going to talk about. But witch hazel or any of the astringents, so here I have witch hazel, here I have green, black tea, here I have a green tea bag. These are all astringents. So lavender isn't astringent, it just it has a nerve um, pathway that just stops the pain and helps with the healing and the burn. But the astringents, both the witch hazel, the tea, the tea bag, can be used as an emergency type situation on a hot spot. The witch hazel would be diluted 50-50 with tea, and if you didn't have anything else, you were up on a trail or whatever, you could take this tea bag, dip it in the witch hazel tea combination, put it on the hot spot, and at least stop the spreading, um, assuming that you don't have any lavender oil. So those are great little um, astringent type things. <laughs> um, we also have, as astringents go, um, Epsom salts, and these are kind of more conventional treatments. Um, I do see people use these things. I just don't think, um, unless you absolutely know it's an infection, like a bacterial infection, I wouldn't use any antimicrobials, but you could if you knew it was an infection. 
Um, the thing is on about hot spots is there's so many different causes, so you don't know which, you know, it's, it's just safer to use the diluted lavender oil or the tea witch hazel combination. But I also did want to talk about herbs. <laughs> she's not in the way. No, no, she's good. <laughs> Daphne! Okay, yeah, you're not allowed to eat stuff. Daphne! Let's just see what she's doing. So she's lost weight? I think she has. Good girl, Daphne. We yeah. gotta be on a diet. We gotta get back down to our fighting weight. Okay, we'll let her go. She's like, oh man, I want to get into that garbage so bad. <laughs> okay, so we put away the light astringents. This is good for a moist pyoderma. Um, that is to say a moist hot spot. If you'd use it on a moist hot spot, it'll dry it up, um, especially with several applica applications. Um, so then we have our herbal approaches. Our herbal approaches being aloe vera. Look at my poor aloe vera plant. Did you see this thing? Yeah. Well, it looks a lot better than it used to look. Um, <laughs> we put a light on it, and it's like, Jeff goes, wow, it's so green. <laughs> but unfortunately, it needs to be transplanted. See, these are all babies growing out. Anyway, so if I were going to do an herbal, um, I think the herbs work the best for hot spots. So if people do have an aloe vera plant, I would actually take um, one of the leaves of the aloe vera, say this one, this one's a nice one. Um, aloe vera juice that you buy at the health food store does not help that much um, because there's citric acid in it, I'm assuming, and it's just not fresh. So what we're going to do is if we're going to make a hot spot medicine, we'll just do it out of the gel, the fresh gel. So I might cut it, I cut it lengthwise, then I'll cut it again. And I'll cut it again, and it just so just so I can. And what you want is this slimy. You want the slimy stuff on the inside. And I would, if it was me making it, honestly, I would just take that aloe gel, the fresh gel, and I might just take one of these longitudinal sections, and I might go ahead and scoop it out with my fingernail. Now that's me being kind of a crazy herbalist, rather than somebody else who wants to use a knife and I would just try to get a little a bunch of little like fresh gel in the bottom of this bowl um, so and this is you know sometimes people are in a place where they have access to aloe and they kind of forget about it and they said oh I'll just go to the store and get aloe juice and it's like oh no it's not gonna work near as well as just aloe gel so we just scrape it off we'll maybe kind of take the rest of this aloe and move it over here and I think the best thing for hot spots is fresh aloe gel mixed with um, other herbs. So, uh, let's see if I have a towel real quick. Yeah. So we got our fresh aloe <laughs> sludge. And then I got these calendula flowers from my garden and these are frozen from last year. <laughs> so you can do a little bit of calendula in there. Do you? And it's so cool to have the actual fresh plant, isn't it, Kristen? Yeah. I think so. So it comes, they come in yellow and orange. They're super easy to grow. They're like weeds, especially around Washington. So I might do some calendula. I might do some aloe. And then I also might do some plantain. Now, plantain, a lot of people don't know plantain, but even though it grows in their own backyard. Um, I've literally had people... Uh, talk to me about plantain, just what is it, and then they're like almost standing on it. So I'm just going to show a couple different plantain plants. So between aloe and calendula and plantain, pretty much that'll kick almost any hot spot pretty fast. Um, so this is a plantain plant just from our yard, and it come, it has these little seed pods. This is, this is what it looks like. It's January right now, so in a few months these are going to be really big um, plantain plants. But I actually like to use them early like this. This is a seed pod, plantain seed. So this is um, Plantago laciolata. This is um, this is the medicinal plantain. It's the thin leaf plantain. Anyway, and you can just take and this will take the bite right out of a nettle sting. It'll take the pain right out of a bee sting. Um, it's traditionally it was used. They would just chew it up and put it as a poultice. Um, but you can do it on a hot spot. I like to just kind of activate it with a knife and just cut the plantain up and get that and so a lot of people have this plantain growing in their yard <laughs> especially around here and they don't even know about what great medicine it really is plantains an old remedy for bladder infections all kinds of stuff 
So we got those three. And um, what we do is we would add a little bit of hot water. If this was hot, it would work a little better. Uh, we'd make a little, we'd do a little hot water infusion on top of it and let that sit. And then everything would get activated all together. And we would stir it up. Um, yeah. And making sure we get that nice aloe into the solution. And then we would just run it through a strainer. And there you got it. This would be the perfect little hot spot medicine ready to go. You have your cotton balls and you just get make sure it's a small cotton ball so you're not taking up too much of the solution. And then you would basically dab this into or around the hot spot. Right, Daphne? Mm -hmm. Do you want to come here and we can try it on you? You don't have many hot spots right now. Yeah. <laughs> She's got one little tiny mini microscopic bump. Where? So let's where right here. I felt it under the right. I know. Oh, I know. She's so funny. <laughs> she just doesn't like to be fiddled with. Oh, Duff, just do it. But you know what we could do though? What? I was thinking I could just hold her okay. and hold the hold the hot cotton ball on her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's right here, Kristen. There's a little bit of. No, it's not a hot spot. It's just, it's right, it's like, it's almost like a scar tissue right under her, right in where the front of her sh arm meets. Again, this is like a tenth of what she had before. Right. It's like almost nothing, but. Um, so I thought what I could do is just apply that to that area. Okay. And she's not going to mind it. She thinks she's going to, but I'll just take it. And I know you won't be able to and see I much. You hold her because she's. She's a, yeah. yeah, when one person holds and one person, oh, okay, that's not so bad. So I'm just holding this cotton ball on it. But if it was a true hot spot, you'd want to clip all around it and just kind of get it clean so it doesn't get infected. And you probably want to use a little e-collar or soft cone or something. I love these soft cones I'll show you. See, that's nice. <laughs> that's aloe, aloe on our little spot. Mm -hmm. Um, if you grab me the blue, see that blue thing on that shelf right there? Yeah, this is my form of a, of a e-collar. Look at that. It's awesome, eh? Yeah. So it's just, it's just a med one. She'd probably go crazy if we put it on her. But this, if she was licking at it and mm -hmm. you really didn't, couldn't do anything about it and you really had to stop it from spreading, like, you know the breed that gets it the worst is a golden retriever. Really? I saw so many golden retrievers on emergency because it would start literally, I'm, I'm not making you paranoid, but it would start like at say 4 p.m. as a tiny little hotspot only like this big. Yeah. And by like 5 or 5.30, the thing would be like monster. It was the craziest thing. So if they wow. just stuck a, if they stuck some kind of, comfort, this is a vet one, but if they stuck some sort of um, cone on them like this, <laughs> just to kind of get their mind on something else. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they did their hot spot treatment, like I just showed. Um, even if they didn't have the lavender oil, um, then it would be like, bam, you could stop the spreading of it. Yeah, I used to treat it on emergency. <laughs> People would come in and they would pay so much money to get, you know, and we would have to shave it. And then, of course, if you're using conventional medicine, I honestly don't think it works near as well as using these herbs. Using these herbs, for sure. Yeah, for hot spots, the herbs are just the best. If people don't have the herbs, they can use the other things we talked about. But yeah, so it doesn't have to be a horrible e-collar. It can be just a soft one. Mm -hmm. So she can drink with this and eat with it and everything. What do you think, Daphne? I <laughs> think she likes it. <laughs> She's the opposite of most she dogs. She likes it. You like it, honey? I'm going to yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I think that's kind of all I have to say. Do you guys do you have any questions about hot spots? I do have one other thing I was going to say about my salve. I make a healing salve, uh, and I do a video on how to do this. It's This is not used, so basically these herbs can be used for moist or dry hot spots. Um, the witch hazel or the tea should be used for moist hot spots. The lavender, can be, the lavender with olive oil can be used for moist or dry hot spots. But my salve should really be only used for dry hot spots. And, um, and it doesn't have to be my salve, but you can see the ingredients. Calendula, that sounds familiar. Comfrey, which we don't have here right now. Plantain, that's this one right here. Golden seal, so there's a little bit of antimicrobial action in golden seal. And St. John's wort, which also cuts the pain associated with nerves. So um, what happens is the hot spots create almost like a nerve um, neuritis, like a local nerve inflammation. So either the St. John's wort oil or the lavender oil will both cut that um, 
out you know, almost instantly. So some type of herbal healing salve can be really helpful, especially if there are, is any actual infection in, in there, like a bacterial infection. That's where golden seal would be good. Okay, that's all I have to say about hotspots. <laughs>